Welcome to Epstein Becker Green Employment Law This Week podcast. I'm George Whipple. January 20th, 2025 will mark the end of Joe Biden's term as president, and we can expect major changes under the next administration. The federal agencies under Biden are making a last minute push to take action before Inauguration Day next year. On November 13th, the National Labor Relations Board outlawed captive audience meetings. These are mandatory meetings where employers express their views on unionization. Employers may still hold such meetings, but employee attendance cannot be mandatory. With this decision, the Labor Board overturns nearly 80 years of precedent and removes a widely used tool for employers. While the Trump administration is likely to oppose this decision, the NLRB is not strictly an Article II agency. That means that, unless the structure of the NLRB is altered by the courts, the current board and decisions like these will remain in place well into the next administration. Earlier this year, the Biden DOL released a final rule raising the salary threshold for overtime pay. President Obama took similar action in his final year of office, and Biden's rule has a similar fate to that one. On November 15th, a federal judge in Texas vacated the Biden administration's overtime rule nationwide. The rule raised the salary threshold for overtime exemptions in July of this year with additional scheduled increases in January 2025, July 2027, and every three years after that. This decision not only prevents future increases from going into effect nationwide, it applies retroactively to the increases in July. While the Biden DOL could appeal, time is short, and it will likely be left to the Trump administration to defend the rule, dismiss it, or issue an entirely new rule. We saw more last minute action with the sudden return of wage and hour opinion letters this month. These letters were standard practice for decades until President Obama abandoned the practice during his administration. President Trump brought them back, publishing around 80 letters during his first term. But Biden took the Obama approach. The two opinion letters released this month bring President Biden's total to only four. One letter addresses overtime calculations, and the other details the use of leave under the FMLA. Opinion letters are direct responses to public questions, and, in this case, are likely an attempt to entrench the administration's interpretation in the service of broader policy priorities. Upon taking office in 2021, President Biden immediately rescinded several opinion letters issued in the waning months of the Trump administration. It remains to be seen what effect these various approaches and actions have in the next four years. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. This podcast is presented by Epstein, Becker & Green, PC. All rights are reserved. This audio recording includes information about legal issues and legal developments. Such materials are for informational purposes only and may not reflect the most current legal developments. These informational materials are not intended and should not be taken as legal advice on any particular set of facts or circumstances, and these materials are not a substitute for the advice of competent counsel. The content reflects the personal views and opinions of the participants. No attorney-client relationship has been created by this audio recording. This audio recording may be considered attorney advertising in some jurisdictions under the applicable law and ethical rules. The determination of the need for legal services and the choice of a lawyer are extremely important decisions and should not be based solely upon advertisements or self-proclaimed expertise. No representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed is greater than the quality of legal services performed by other lawyers.